older people, I found, take maybe the longer recovery time. This is from your personal experience? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if this has occurred to you, but but your personal experience isn't a case study. Oh, right. I mean, that's, that's not, that doesn't make a, a scientific study. Um, it's often the case, but it's not always the case. Yeah, it certainly can be the case. Um, it depends on various factors, including reserves. I mean, unfortunately, the older someone is, and some of you, probably most of you know, Robert turned 77 a couple days ago. So 77 years of building up mucoid plaque, that's a lot of garbage to get rid of, okay? That's gonna be harder to move than someone who's 29, right? Or whatever, I'm sorry, I forgot. 30. 30, pretty close. Um, you're welcome, you're welcome. You look amazingly young for a 30 year old. I would have guessed you're 29 and a half or 29 and three quarters. Wow, wow. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the older you are, the more that stuff is probably there. And that's, that means it's gonna, it's gonna be a little harder to get that stuff moving and to get it out. And if you're also starting with relatively few reserves and you're already, you know, very lean, that's gonna be a little more challenging too. No question. Not, not every person your age is gonna be it like you are. Yes, sir. So what are the kind of requirements for reserves? Like when, when do you like need to stop? I think you mentioned someone had a lot of fat, but not a lot of muscle. Uh -huh. And that was actually more a problem. Like not having muscle is more of a problem. Not no, not, I mean, not necessarily, no. Uh, you know, what'll happen for someone who's got very little muscle mass to start with, like very little for their size, they're gonna get super weak. And they may get so weak that it feels like they can't continue. They probably could. They're just going to have a hard time moving around. Okay? Um, because your body's running on primarily fat, you know, having ample fat is probably more important. It's probably more of the determining factor. But it's hard to say. I mean, um, I, I said to someone today, you probably need to gain some weight, and I rarely do that. But I heard from a guy this morning who's 6'4", 128 pounds, okay? That's pretty lean, right? Um, he could probably fast. The problem is he can't fast long enough to actually heal. I mean, he's gonna lose, you know, remember the most of the weight's lost in the first week. And so after a week or so, someone that size gets so thin and weak that they don't really wanna continue, but they would need to. So it's rare that I'll tell someone to gain weight before they fast, but in his case, it probably makes sense, in my opinion. So I've heard you can go down to like 2% body fat before your body starts like eating its organs. Is that about when you have well, to stop? Well, 2% two, 2 to 2.5% fat is considered essential fat. We need that to survive. So you don't want to go below that. Okay? But we don't really ever see anyone go that low. I mean, everyone here has seen photographs or film footage of people walking out of concentration camps, right? Yeah. Those are people who had, you know, 2% body fat, some of those some, people. Some 2%? That's no. Yeah, 3% body fat. Of course, he had lots of muscle, but he still must have looked a little scary. Yeah. He was fast, but yeah, I, I, I don't know what he looks like. I mean, usually what's, what's happened, you know, someone that's been starving already, they, they have 2%, they're alive, but you get to 2% and what happens is your body won't consume anymore because that would kill you. So what does it do? It begins consuming muscle, organs, etc. So the people walking out of concentration camps, they were starving. We don't want to get to that point. Um, and that's the thing. I mean, Frank Shorter didn't look like a concentration camp victim because he had muscle mass. Right? We'll often have people here that say to me, um, they'll say something like, oh, I, I, think I'm, I think I'm too skinny to go on. And we'll look at their body fat, and they've got, they still have a fair amount of body fat. I mean, not a lot of body fat, but they still have, you know, five, six, sometimes 10% body fat. There are many people that are, that are 10 or 12% body fat who look much thinner than I do. Why is that? 
You don't have a lot of muscle? They don't have very much muscle. Right? That's the difference. So, yeah, I mean, ideally, you, you want to have both. And what's the ideal body fat that you want to have? Is well, I believe for guys, we want to be between 5 and 12%. And women, between 15 and 20%. And I'm not saying that's a hard and fast rule. Uh, the bigger your frame is, the more you can probably handle and naturally would carry. But I think, you know, what's true is that if you look at the species in nature, with the exception of species that need fat for temperature regulation, generally speaking, the healthiest members of every species are among the leanest members of the species. I'm not suggesting 2%, but I'm saying, you know, I think a healthy range is 5 to 12. 5% body fat makes someone with relatively little muscle mass look very skinny. But the same amount of body fat on someone who's got enough muscle mass, that looks fine. Hi, enjoying my videos? If you'd like to learn much more, check out the Academy for Vibrant Living where our Vibrant Health course will teach you everything you need to know to take your health to an amazing new level. And if you'd like to turn your passion for health into a lucrative career, check out the health coaching course where you can become a professional certified health coach and help as many people as possible see amazing results.